Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to, to our master class. Uh, I'm here, I'm black to present Maria and Bart, two incredible professionals uh, with a lot of experience in the, in the football industry. And for us, it's such a pleasure to, to share this master class because it's really, really exciting how they create uh, the careers in the, in the industry and also uh, it's very important for us to to show the, their careers and, and what they have been doing during this, these years and I want to present first uh, Maria so Maria is all yours please tell us your, your experience where have you been so thank you, Fran. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. My name is I have been working all my life uh, uh, in relation with the football, create in youth academy football. First, I have been working in Bilbao. I spent 20 as a psychologist. I was in charge to develop players, but mainly to develop a learning culture in the whole organization. Six years ago, five years ago, I decided to move to Qatar, and now I mean, uh, with the future players of the, and my, my main role is uh, something similar, yeah? it's a first of the coaches that have to create learning environments with players. Well, my main job is to root one project, one educative project. And today we will speak with Bart about it. And it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much, Maria. Uh, and I want to show something that Maria, every every session when uh, she came to her master in uh, football direction shows to, to her students. Uh, so I will share my, my screen and, and share one photo so Maria can explain a, a little bit. Maria, can you, can yes. you see the photo? Perfect. Thank you, Fran. Yeah. If we are going to talk about high performance culture, we know that we are talking about what? Yeah. And if you can see in photo, you can see that it is one white and black photo. And there is some task. It's, they are doing always the same task. It's a mechanical job to think. And most of the times, of sometimes our teams, our play in this way, yes, just, just repeating the movement that the coaches demand. In the next photo, there is the color photo, you can see that there are some workers, they are communicative, they are looking for solution together. Then that both companies create good cars, yes, they did uh, my question questions for all of you is um, what are the compare to the high performance level in car company? What are the that should level to the high performance football culture? What happens in the white and um, black? What happens with the talent of the develop, what happens with their, with their motivation? What happens with their learning? Then, about 
a high performance culture, the first question that we need to ask ourselves, what kind of player do we want to create? Do we want to develop? Because in both photos, we are creating different kinds of professionals. Professionals from the color of the white photo are learning and what the professionals are learning. They are learning different things. They are performing in a different In these companies, we have different identities with different cultures. Audience. What, in which company, do you want to would you? What kind of leaders do you want to black photo and what kind of leadership demands the thank you maria uh i will stop uh sharing my screen i will come back to you again uh very interesting because after present bar uh, I want to start to talk about club identity and it's very important how to treat uh, the people that is involved in, in the club structure to, to develop uh, the uh, mm -hmm. culture and go through our goals. So, Mart, it's all yours. Please present yourself. And as I said before, uh, thank you very much for being here. And it's such a pleasure to have you to have you here. So, please. Yeah. Now, for me, it's also really nice to be here, and we have a good contact. Our club AZ. I worked there for ten years now. We have a good connection with Real Madrid. They're visiting us uh, every year. Um, so, really nice to do it now online. I'm the head of lifestyle coaching, so I help the players formally. Also, a little bit the coaches, but mainly the players. I help with their lifestyle. And for us, I studied uh, human movement sciences and psychology. And lifestyle is like your own personal trainer. Maybe you have one uh, as you're um, listening right now or watching right now. And we believe by preventive help the players with sleep, with nutrition, with mental training, but do it in between each other that it's normal that the players will understand that it helps them not only to become a better football player but also to feel better um, in their in, in their general lives and with that i help them uh, with that i help them not only the players but also the parents so we give parent meeting as well um, and we believe that a better lifestyle like for example real madrid players have like former uh, ronaldo for example but now less of times also Bayern munich um, yeah that we believe that helps them become better football players but also better better people so really logic to have a function as somebody like me to help them with and later on, I will show you some sheets, but that's for later. But thank you very much. Uh, I will start showing uh, one video that you want to, to present. Thanks. Uh, no problem. Please uh, take a look. I will show again my screen. And please enjoy the video because it's very cool. We are as a, you may know us, we're our way of developing talents. In recent seasons, an average of 45% of all playing minutes have been made by players who have been trained at our club. We have recruited players at the age of 11 and put them in an environment where they can get the most out of themselves. When you play our under 13, the 48% chance to become a professional football player but the development does not stop after the academy. Many because we believe in growth and development, regardless of age. It's no coincidence. It is a result of years and years of dedicated work. It is because training talent is a vital important to our club. At our Z, we think differently and challenge the status quo. We are looking to build an edge in unique but logical ways. We have our own vision on learning and training so that talent can grow to their full potential 
and are ready for the future. In order to play the football of the future, we need players with a certain talent. We believe in players who master the ball and are game intelligent in different circumstances to teach them to understand the essence of football in every scenario. We believe in being in optimal physical condition. We train with an intensive program of explosiveness and movement skills so that we can create a physical advantage over our opponent. We believe in the person with body and mind at any time of the day to recover and perform optimally. We believe in innovative training methods in which the eye of the mind combines with facts and data analysis and scientific evidence. But we are never satisfied. We are extremely motivated to continue improving and keep building the future. Let's keep building the future together. Thank you, Mark, for sharing this. And I'm glad to, to see that video. Because, Las vacaciones de San Pedro, uh, con el uh, four years uh, visiting a set and your work. It's incredible how you work with the talents, the kids, the young players, and see the career to to get into the professional football. So your, your talent to, into the club. So you can share with us uh, your slides. Yeah. Uh, please. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see it. I will skip the video. First of all, uh, welcome. Um, I'm glad you take the time to 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 um, to be here. And this is uh, our club with the uh, Escuela Universitaria Real Madrid. Video you already seen. For our club, high performance is a way of thinking and doing. It's not about the facilities, although we got a nice facility. It's about the culture. Really nice that Maria is also talking about the culture and especially the identity. And I wanted to show the video because I believe the video is showing the video is showing which identity we have. For me, it's the word improvement. We don't have the best players. We don't have the most money, but we believe we, we, we can improve players. So that's what I wanted to show today before your questions are here with the video but also by a former Real Madrid player. This is the way of thinking and doing we are talking about. Even if we win a lot of games, but we always say it's not about the winning, it's about the room for improvement because we want to reach with our whole club the Champions League level, but for that we need guys who want to improve. And that's especially in the Netherlands really important because sometimes youth matches you win a lot. So the, 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 the quote, the way of thinking and doing, uh, take Ronaldo as an example. And we use this kind of uh, slides, this kind of quotes. We use it a lot to, to trigger the player, to help them with the way of thinking and doing. Um, but okay, yeah, only using a video and a quote of Ronaldo, that's too easy for us. The culture, what's the culture about? It's not waiting until there are problems and then going to fix it. In the Netherlands, you see a lot of sports psychologists, for example, fixing problems. No, we believe in prevention. With prevention, we can help all the players by having a better focus instead of only helping the players who have a fear of failure, in which we see it. And once again, in the Netherlands, but I visited Real Madrid also one time, and had the same kind of discussions that a lot of times a sports psychologist or a nutritionist is more fit, waiting until there are problems and then and you're creating a kind of taboo on your own profession. We believe in prevention. I'm the head of lifestyle. So I help all the players and mostly for uh, workshops within teams, all the players better sleep, better nutrition, better focus, better handling feedback. The quote we always use, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. This is the quote, which is according with the principle I just showed. So of course, sometimes we're fixing problems, but 90% of our time is focusing within the culture on prevention, on making people stronger. Second principle, we never start with knowledge. This is an apple, you should eat it like this. We always start with the motivation of the player. So uh, for now, I was Real Madrid, uh, the former player, uh, Ronaldo again. But okay, why is Ronaldo this eating? Do you know why? What is he eating? Uh, what can he improve? What do you eat? Just the questions, if you want to reach Champions League level, or like Ronaldo, what's he doing with his lifestyle? 
uh, quote is a little bit older quote from Plato. Do not train do not train children to learning by force and harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds. Nobody amuses their minds. Yeah, maybe only the nutritionist about the apple, the vitamin C into it for the for the bones. No, they want we want to trigger them with Ronaldo. How do we do it? Combine principle one and two. How do we combine it in a culture? Saying, okay, you want to sleep right or not, Ronaldo. So start with a quote, then explain them why it's important for them, and then give some advice. And then in, in the end, is sleep is called natural doping. Or with food, okay, you want to do it as Mohamed Salah. He says it's an important part of the game for recovery, for sleep, to, uh, to his body and the adaptation of his body. Why it's important, then give some advice. Let food be your medicine. Also, an even older quote. Switch off to refresh. Why it's important to also do things next to football. Uh, what are the kind of refreshments you see here? Just make it not only looking nice. Uh, I think it looks nice, but make it look nice for the player, but also make it really simple for them. Don't make it too complicated with a nutrition schedule. Maybe when you're in the first team, when you're young, just give them things like this and give them a kind of, uh, kind of games. Make it amuses their minds. And all the players, if you want to reach Champions League level, they want to learn this. Only they don't want to learn it from somebody in a white coat and explaining a lot. The last principle I want to show you for today is don't focus on symptoms, but look at the causes. What I see a lot of times, what I see a lot of times is that people are focused on the symptoms. And this, but the symptom is never the problem. Yeah, this is not a quote from Plato, but from somebody else. And the symptom is always um, just something which uh, the, the, the cause is, is, is transformed into the system. But if you only give them Band-Aid or only give them the magnesium for something when they have stress, that doesn't help. Rosa, you do. I ask a lot of times, what would Ronaldo do? For me, it's one of the most important questions because uh, Ronaldo, probably his cause is uh, that he's fit. So don't um, uh, go to the, to the physical therapist and say, okay, what can you do to help him fixing the symptoms? Let's say the stiff hamstring. No, look at the cause. What can be the problem of, uh, of the stiff hamstring, of the symptom, and then look at the cause and treat the cause. Live, and that's the question right here, live like Ronaldo was living because that's one example. And then once again, our identity, uh, we want to show if you have the right high, if you're living in the right high performance culture and helping um, yourself with all the things, then you can grow. This is a young player who started in our under 12. He's now playing at Atalanta Bergamo. So left, you see visually his development, his improvement, and in the right, you see his improvement in scores. And the improvement in scores, we believe you should focus on growth and development as was already explained in the video. So that was the sheets I wanted to show to give you a little bit better idea of what we believe in and what we are doing, recording not only to a high performance culture, but just, we always say, our improvement culture. That's the word we use. Thank you very much, Bart, and also Maria. And to follow up the, this discussion, and after seeing what Maria showed about these different images where people work in a different way and have different vision and also the identity that Bar has shown us. I will uh, to talk about the club identity. And we'll know that club identity is the value, goals, and relationships uh, in other aspects that develop over time to form also the club history. And I will uh, ask to Bart first, uh, how does this club identity influence in a club's ability to build a high performance culture? I, I think it's the even more important question than, than a high performance culture because your identity is what you believe in. And we believe our identity is that we believe in improvement and high performance. That I don't really like the word, sorry, because the Congress is, is, is named high performance. But high performance is the results because it's about performance. You can perform because your identity, your culture is right. And then the high performance is the result. It's not the goal in itself. So I believe it's one of the, and, and like Maria was already telling, if you have maybe a lot of money, then you can have maybe another kind of identity, another culture, uh, which can result into high performance. Yeah, exactly. So Maria, has, has your opinion about, about it? Uh, how do you think, how 
influence this club identity mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. build a to the into the club. Okay. Yes. You know, Fran, that uh, I like to think, think with questions. Question that when we want to think about our identity and do this reflection, the question that we understand our, our identity is the question is who uh, I am. That. Then when one club is speaking about this, is the question is okay, who and the, 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 the question for identity is who. It's about the essence. The substantial part, the essence part of, of something. You know that there are many, many different drops. Yes, what is raining? It's, yeah. But what is, what is the identity? That what makes the identity? All of them, of these drops, have water. Then the drop. Then if we want to know about the to know the player, if we want to know during what is high performance in my club, yes, we need to understand this, the properties, the essence properties that the that the high performance is made of. Hmm? Or if we want to know about them, we need to know the elements. What are the main elements that build our identity? Question that who are uh, we? Then uh, the, the human being we have three. Uh, we are made of three elements, and if we want to develop players, coaches, and the organizations, the country of organization, is something. It's not a thing. It's a, a interaction between people life that as well has his identity then when we talk about develop players develop coaches we are talking about uh, the essence part the substantial part of the human being yes and we are made of three elements we are made of understanding we are about effectiveness and as well, we are made of energy action. Developed a high performance environment or culture. We can we need tools and we need to develop these three elements. For instance, in the photo, white and black photo, in this environment, we, they don't this not develop which element is missing communication they don't need to think then in that teach player and when we train players and they are not using his and when they are not using their effectiveness the potential that the person has then if we speak about identity I am doing to contribute to develop the identity of an organization. What we do now? And have we developed the understanding? Or they only obey? Are we develop the effectiveness, personal intelligence? Are we develop the determination, the, the, the capability to act and to do things? Or they are they are only repeating some movements? Then, Fran, so our identity. If you want to know the identity of something, you need to know the essence properties, qualities that this organization and in our case, the human being is made of. Ask ourselves what we're doing to develop the understanding of the plainness of their actions. Thank you, Maria. And following up your what you have said before, uh, I want to talk about context because when we understand what our identity, I think we should know where we are. Uh, so 
you say to understand also. So we need to understand or where are we now and also to understand the people that surround us. So okay. you have been working in many countries such as Spain, Qatar, you have been also here in Mexico, visiting jobs and understanding uh, different uh, methodologies. And I will ask, uh, how should we adapt to work with people from different cultures? Because nowadays mm -hmm. we are living in a multicultural uh, world. Mm -hmm. uh, we have working uh, with different uh, people from different countries. And I think it's very important to adapt to understand like each other. So, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. When I work in these different cultures and these different countries, mm -hmm. uh, uh, always I Yes, something that is uh, very specific from this country, from Mexico, and we need to respect and I need to adapt. But as well, I something that is universal. It's the same in Qatar, it's the same in Spain, and it's the same. And, and follow it with your question. My is the same is the learning. What is the main uh, objective? The main function of learning is, is to create identity. Can we create ourselves without learning? The high performance level, if we speak about to develop and to grow something outstanding, we need to speak about learning. Then we develop a high performance environment is the learning to have a clear way. And sometimes nowadays the football is linked with data, with GPS, and we are forgetting the game. The game. Yeah. The football game. And if this is our main reason of being our main objective in Aspire. Here, my main objective, our main objective in Bilbao, is the is to understand the game. Yeah, Maria, that really is nice. The game without players. Who create the game? The players. Then to understand or to create understanding about myself as a player. Play. That and this to learn is something. Human is something that is in whatever part in the world. Without learning, we cannot do this thing. And nobody. Okay? And we learn, we need the context to learn. We need interaction. We cannot learn alone. How we build this, this interaction. And if these interactions really create learning and turn on people. To create this high performance culture. Awesome. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, I see that Bar agrees also with you. I really like the answer. And I always say, Maria, maybe you know the quote, is one of my favorite philosophers, Taleb. He says, The world is no Excel sheet. And when I see all the physical departments only uh, behind, uh, it is good that we have them. And don't get me wrong, but sometimes they are all into the numbers and into the Excel sheets. And it's it's you you need it. It can help you as a club. But this is uh, an answer from my heart because I think that uh, we 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 don't want to forget, but we sometimes forget within football because there's not a number onto it, and then it's not like uh, then they they don't count it like signs, for example. But it is definitely signs, only more like psychological signs. Yeah, totally yeah. agree, Bart. And also, Bart, uh, following that line of context, yeah. uh, how do you work? Uh, with ASAT players to, to show that identity? 
Um, with the video I just uh, was showing to you, because we start a lot of time with kind of videos and then have a discussion. We believe this is our identity, but what's your identity as a new player? What can you add to this video? What can you add to the legacy? That's the word we we, we, we learned from the All Blacks. And so, so this is what we are right now, but what you can add. Um, it should just have to talk about identity. Um, and the same with culture. In the Netherlands, we have a lot of people from different cultural backgrounds, but don't say like, oh, that's not good. Or that, hey, but what's your culture? What's normal in your culture? Just talk about, hey, how can that maybe helps us, uh, helps us at the club. So, so, so just have to show what identity we believe is, is the club, but also have a, have a, have a um, the, the players should understand that they are not only should be curious about what's our identity, but also they have to feel the responsibility of adding. Because identity, like for every normal person who's growing, who's evolving, identity isn't fixed. Identity you can create, you can, yeah, not, not tomorrow totally different, but you can add something to it. And we want, we, we in, in our gym, there's a really big uh, sign on the wall. And I like the quotes, write the future. And it's the same with, with identity. So just have an open talk, but of course start with, this is what we believe is our identity, like like we use in the video, or and that's, that's also in psychology a lot of times explained to me. People understand stories. So tell stories about Teun, the last video of my, my sheets, or sorry, the last photo of my sheets. Then you see the small Teun coal miners who developed into a bigger, just uh, explain about his identity and how it helped him. And just share the stories, which we believe are about most of the time improvement. And like Liverpool has the word intensity, we have more the word improvement. Yeah, that, that, that just have an, have an open talk. Yep. And I want to ask you, Bart, as well, um, how do you handle like, the different contexts in the process of players when they move from one stage to, to another? Or when a player makes the jump into the first team. Yeah, that's maybe the, the, the most difficult transfer to the first team because then a lot of things change. Only um, by not making it even a bigger problem, by doing all the extra things, no work preventive. So explain up front, these are the problems you can um, face within the first team about more money, more attention, maybe also hostile fans. In the youth, it's just about nice tournaments maybe you lose but it's okay but then all of a sudden you're in the first team maybe you're even young but then you're a first team player then so just explain uh, and, and try to get some exercise to them to so that they will understand hey this is about um, that they already have a plan about and then when they really experience the plan it's not fixed but you can um, yeah you can prepare uh, be preventive prepare them uh, for it yeah and Maria, uh, also talking about this process when one player makes a jump into another stage or first team. Okay. Uh, what's your or how, what have you seen that is like the most typical problem when one player faces that stage, or when one coach? Uh, or what we need to do a coach when he receives that player? So how we need to treat them? Uh, we, I think in general, oh, I, I don't know why, exists the belief uh, the player step into the professional, he finishes his know everything. He needs to be ready for everything. Yeah? Then you see, the cycle of development of the human being is from zero years old. Then we never stop to develop. We never stop to grow. Then this is something that I think we need to think. Yeah. Because we ask the team years old that they behave yeah, like a full triple. They cannot make a mistake. They cannot uh, lose the focus. They need to feel like people. Then this is the first step yeah? that we need to think about this. Those problems because we don't take in account this. When we uh, are a we start a new cycle of development. Then maybe something in my past that I can learn now. 
Yes, maybe in my primary is my frustration. And now we have a 18 years old player who needs to learn to manage his frustration because in the past he couldn't. Our role, the adult, the people that work surrounding players, ability that to develop the likeness, the people in this case, players or coaches couldn't develop in the past. They cannot disconnect the first group, our first group, where we start to watch the family. And in this group, we learn something, but we don't learn anything. It's good. The third group is the group of sport. When we are working, and in we enter in the new group, looks that I couldn't overcome or, or I couldn't be sat or did or weren't satisfied. In, okay, then Fran, the first step is to understand that the, with 18 years old players should grow and should uh, keep developing. Okay, because it's not that great, hmm? and, and it's we really create an mm -hmm. identity. Yeah, and it will really has problems. The problems of the players speak about our limits. When one player has one problem, the, the coaches, the psychologists, people who work with these players, we didn't do. The, they are speaking about our limits. It's not only the problem of the player. My problem as a psychologist is always my problem as a coach. And speaking about our limits, then this is a big change of paradigms. If we want to talk about high performance level, yeah, because we need to be sustainable. We don't want one player and suddenly in three years the player decides we need a player that, that was sustainable. And have and can play 20 or 10 or 15 years. Yeah. And that means that we need to, to develop this identity. Then we need to learn a lot of the adults that work to the surrounding play. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. And uh, well. I want to take the opportunity right now to, if the audience has any question, please send it to us and I can show you to, to Bart or Maria. So please, you are free to, to ask and join this, this discussion. And jumping into other topic, well, no other topic, but to the relationship between players and, and coaches. Right, right, right now I'm reading a book that says that an objective is building a process and what happens in that constructive process is what really matters to us. So, mm -hmm. Bart, how can improve interactions and conversation with players from a coach's point of view? Sorry, how can you? Um... How can you uh, improve interactions and conversations with players? Oh, how can you improve? Coach, yeah, yeah, from a co coach's point of view. And that's one of the, I think, in, um, the answer is just be curious and be eager yourself. Because if you trained in communication and reading, and reading books about communication, about growth mindset, the messages that can help, help a lot. Yeah, and also I want to take the opportunity. Uh, how you uh, interact with players because uh, or students that have been in AZ have seen how you work with players and how you speak with them. So yep. can you uh, share a little bit how is your daily life in AZ and how yep. you work well, with them? Yeah, one of the most important, but also answers for the trainers is trainers have training sessions. I don't have training sessions on the pitch, but I give five, six or seven workshops a year for each team about sleep, about nutrition, about focus, about handling setbacks, about uh, visualization. And that's the moment I can 
not only send them information, always start well, with a kind of Ronaldo example with their motivation, how elite players are using it. But then I'm starting the discussion. And then I can explain, I ask to the player, maybe do you use visualization? When and how? And when it went well and when it went not well. And by creating a moment for the team on that topic, it's more easy for players who have at that moment questions to ask to me because I created the environment or for players after the meeting to WhatsApp me uh, by phone or come to me and say, Bar, I didn't want to say in the group, but I sometimes have uh, uh, problems with feedback. So just uh, like in schools, you also have um, science, then you got uh, Dutch, you got English, you got uh, just um, uh, start with topics, uh, explain about it, to give them some exercises to do, and then you start a conversation. And trainers do that on the pitch. And of course, you can give trainers advice. Maybe that was your former question. You can give them advice. Don't give too much feedback because then the player feel, oh, I'm not doing it well. But give them feed forward. So look to what they can add in the future. Then the player is more open to learn because he can influence the future, but not the past. And we as adults think, yeah, but you give feedback so he can change something or he can uh, change it in the future. But a child maybe only hears, he's, he's telling I'm not good enough and maybe I have to leave. So that, But that's also, once again, with the trainers, give a workshop or hire somebody who's explaining about communication. I started in Corona time a podcast about different topics in which I interview somebody else who knows a lot more, let's say, about communication. And then um, send the podcast to the trainers. Just make it not really, how do you say, uh, don't make it too complicated with just whole articles or lists. Just have, a, have an, a conversation or with the players in which you will prepare, of course, or with the trainers. Don't make it um, too difficult. Yeah. Have good good relationship with, with a person is, I think, very important and to be closed and makes like open the environment to to go through the goal. I think uh, seeing this... Uh, yeah years working uh i said and also maria and different uh cases uh that we have on this different master in the university i think one of the most important things uh is to be close of of the player be close to the coach be close of the, the staff because when you're close you understand more the the problem and you understand more how to treat and yeah also to solve the, the problem if there is a, any problem and maria uh i know that you also work a lot uh, with coaches and sometimes mm -hmm. we emphasize a lot on players development and the learning mm -hmm. process but sometimes we forgot about the coach so Right now we are talking about players, players, and yeah, because players is, I think, also one of the most important in, in football. But also, the educators or the coaches, who is like in charge of them, or how can we talk to them, and how can we help them to, to also be fit to yeah. develop their, their, their work? Yes. yes. For me, Fran, if we speak about developed players, is a negotiable condition or is a mandatory condition to speak about, about development? Uh, because the players uh, cannot, the, the players the interaction, then, then the decisions, the action that the coaches has, has consequences. Our action has consequences on the others. Yeah. And uh, you need to be aware. And you speak, you spoke before about to create a relationship and to create a conversation. And it's not only conversations where the, the players, uh, the player and the coach need to feel uncomfortable because learning puts you to your puts you to discover you are blind spots or you are shadow things that you don't want to see. Yeah. And the other is observing with coaches is very important. To the, the coaches first need to learn themselves because they have to teach and have to create learning environments for 
por pleito. Then if you arrive to Qatar one day to aspire, before the one is in the training session and the competition, we have a learning structure. It's not only a close relationship. And to learn means to change. If I want to learn something, I need to change something. I need to learn something new. And sometimes there is resistance, emotions, yeah. because I don't know why, but everybody wants to change, to change themselves. The coaches want to change the players. The players want to change the coaches. The head director and the coaches want to change the head director. And then the first step is we want to create this is that we need to live here in first person. Then in first person about myself, what are my difficulties, what do I need? Not only players, but as well coaches. Coaches need to reflect and need to learn to think about themselves in first person, not excuses, not justification. Doesn't change anything. Then our main objective, if we are speaking in a high, is the transformation. It's not only to create awareness, unless to apply techniques to the players. To apply techniques, we are applying the laboratory mouse. Then first, we need to create spaces. We need to create training session, during training session, after training session, before the game. What learn before the game? To listen to the coaches. What want the players learn during the game? To reproduce the movements. Then we need to ask ourselves a lot of questions about this high performance culture. Yes. And coaches are the people, you know, environments. But not, not only in the training session and in the playing years, because coaches need to work together. For me, one important high performance organization or culture is this. We have a common approach here is not about egos i like this game i like this way no 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 here we work at the service at that means that i need to learn a philosophy i need to learn one way to understand the game and i need one model of learning that this is the first step we need to learn. Need to learn to work in a common approach. Need to go many belief that maybe in the past has helped them, but now in this looking for different things. Second, a common language. We speak about work. not only all the players in Aspire, oh, when we were in, a, in, in what means to speak in first person, all the players know about blind spots. All the players know about belief, about emotions. But they learn, I didn't teach this. Just create this with the players. Because they learn before this with us, with me. And then, yes, one mandatory condition is is the development of, of coaches yes yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely you know, definitely yeah definitely agree with that i am um, uh, i believe we at the club have a lot of good coaches but if i should say what's the most important that they're curious and they're eager to learn themselves they want to improve themselves because players don't listen to what you say they copy what you do 
So you can say you have to handle feedback well, you need to read books, you need to work out, you need to do this. But the most easy way how people learn, and that's through the mirror neurons, is by copying what you're doing. So uh, it's not only to explain coaches that they and they improve in different things than players, of course. They don't have to uh, push all the weights, but improvement for them is maybe reading a book, follow a course, uh, visiting another club. I visited Real Madrid and sending a lot of pictures, visiting former Dutch uh, football players so I can learn from them. I'm, I'm eager to learn. I'm curious. And uh, I sometimes hear coaches or parents complain about players. And then I think, yeah, you're complaining about them. But which example are you giving yourself? And that's for me, I, I, I don't get it because then I'm like, yeah, they are just copying what you do. Maybe even the complaining, they can complain, uh, they can copy the complaining. Um, and, and that's, that's I really am um, hearing that in the answer of Maria. So I'm really uh, enthusiastic about, uh, about the, same, uh, um, the same kind of ideas slash um, uh, way of thinking. Yeah, so totally, totally agree, Bart. And also, like you know like every everyone during the their career in football other sport or in real life is has developed her own identity and philosophy in life so yeah. also for me important is very important to show uh how i work to others because yeah. i think it's important to develop good to see everyone oh fran is working good I can copy that, or maybe I need to better that thing to be better and also build a good community and I could, in that case, in a good club, identity and philosophy and good environment as well, uh, where everyone can develop and also learn because everyone learn every day. So yeah, as Maria and you said, it's very, very important. And right now we have um, different questions from our, around the world, uh, from Canada, Spain, Costa Rica. And Bart, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, just here, ask, uh, do, to your experience in elite levels in football, do you think that changing lifestyle to the good side have a significant impact uh, on players' performance, I like I like the question, and then I could say, look to Ronaldo, look to Tom Brady, look to Sergio Ramos, yeah, all former players, of course, um, but also look to the signs. The signs about sleep. Tom Brady is doing a lot with sleep. I myself wearing the Aura ring. A lot of basketball players do uh, better sleep. It's better better testosterone, more testosterone, it's better muscle um, uh, growth, so you're feeling more fit in here. So it's for the mental side, it's really important, but also for the body side. And that's only sleep that we can have about nutrition, mental relaxation and mindfulness, all the things there, there, you don't do them maybe only for performance, maybe more for health. So I think what we explain to the youth players, you should explain to everybody in schools because it gives you a happier life, not only how you're feeling, but also how you're developing and performing. So yeah, I am, if I have some uh, some articles, I can send him. But yeah, it, it mainly, I uh, probably the club is paying mostly because it's helping for the performance, but it's also helping for the well-being. So it's a kind of win-win. And yeah, what I said, yeah, uh, just look at the examples. Uh, I, I use a lot of time Bayern Munich as an example. They are just uh, way fitter than, and of course I can say here with Real Madrid, they beat Barcelona a couple of years ago, not because they were better football players, but they, their lifestyle was way better. There's a story about Coutinho that he joined Bayern Munich and he was like, oh, I should, I should do all extra things with lifestyle. I'm not used to it and because of uh, that part of performance. It's not the only part of performance, of course. That's also creativity. That's technique. That's, but lifestyle is a part which have an influence on performance, uh, definitely. Yeah, and I totally agree because also to develop a good uh, lifestyle is a good way to educate the player, the kid. Because sometimes football ends, and you know when. So when you educate well that young talent or player. So he can do something in life. So it's very yeah. important. Handling feedback. If you can't handle feedback as a football player, it will have an influence on you. But in your former life, with your girlfriend, with your uh, with your new boss, uh, with your investment investment funds, if you're really 
um, if you're really rich, learning how to ha handle feedback. Yeah, maybe they, it's not a question about lifestyle, but for me, that's your way of thinking. It's like your way of eating, way of sleeping. That's all part of your lifestyle. The problem, what we did in universities, and I've been to two universities, this is psychology, this is nutrition, this is medical, this is exercise, physiology, this is, and you're only trained as a specialist. I always say you should be in, when you work in football, you should be more a generalist. You should try to combine everything. And if you call that for my uh, lifestyle coaching, I just help the players become better, uh, yeah, better football players, of course, with lifestyle, but also better people. Yeah. Uh, Maria, we have a question from Carlo, uh, Carlos Gonzalez. Uh, he asked uh, as well, how can we make contact with some parents who have a bad behaviors and let them how do they are harming their themselves? So talking about now parents, how can we treat them? How can we speak to them? So has been work, uh, working with parents many years, many, many years, many, during 20 years I, I have two, three meetings with parents, or with parents. and I think is the, the parents are, are part of the system, include them, that we need to understand that they have in the system, food system, and as well, we need to educate them, yes, because sometimes the parents are like the taxi. They have to bring the players, they have to pay the players, and who, who educate the parents? Parents who have children, daughters, living in a high, in high performance environment that create a new need for the parents, a new needs for the players. Yeah. Then, first, I come back. What are you doing to educate these families? How, how, how long, how much do you spend to create this meeting? Of course, mandatory one meeting uh, in precision to clarify the culture, to clarify the rules, to clarify many things that families need to know. Uh, education. I think uh, we do so, and as well, parents need to, to, to receive this education and need to have one space. But one, I have one thing clear 26 years in football, clear. When the, the club has project, and the, what the club say match does there are less problems with parents we develop players but suddenly on the field on the field you see behavior decisions from the coaches and the hot coaches and the club that's with develop players with the idea then the problems appear when we are then when we have problems with the parents, first, education. And second, we need to work or to see ourselves that something doesn't go well in our Then check, please, Carla Pence. How do you work? What are you doing to manage these parents? How do you, what are you doing in the relation to create these spaces? And if you are, are coherent in what you, you are saying, because when there is, when we are coherent, and the, in my experience, the conflict with the parents reduce a lot. Yes. But this is my question. My answer is education. That's an of communication as well this is important when the father the family has any problems he has to speak with who, who. 
who the psychologist first psychologist then if the psychologist say no 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 problem he want they go to speak with the coach then they need to have a clear channel of communication and the club has to manage like with who these parents have to speak with for instance yeah clear channels of communication and of course look with the project of the club if it's coherent between and saying on what we are saying and what we are doing yeah, I definitely uh, agree. And and how we facilitate it to 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 um, add to the answer the education of the parents two times each year before a game of their own son, um, the parents are invited, and then I will explain or somebody else, but mainly uh, I do it about uh, handling feedback and to explain to the parents, but also give them advice about sleep, about nutrition, because you can give it to the player, but if he doesn't transfer it to house, yeah, then 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 the parents should probably buy are buying the food. So by only giving them two workshops each year, of course that takes time eh, for each team. So it's a, in total, it's a lot. But it's not really, really a lot, eh? because if you're every time at the coffee machine complaining about the parents, it will take you more time. So just try to influence them with education. And the funny thing is, by giving them more education, they're really glad that they get they get the information, because there's not such thing as uh, parent education. Their son has become in, in a pro club um, and is getting all the advice and a lot of workshops and advice by other people. So educate the parents. And the funny thing is, that was my first principle. That's not only for the trainers, but also with the parents. Don't wait until there's a problem and they're calling and you have to fix a problem. A lot of negative energy, a lot of not a lot of trust. But if you do it preventively and you're focusing preventive by giving two workshops, maybe you, you prevent some problems which you don't, don't don't have to fix and then the relation is way better yeah totally agree Bart. and i have a question for you uh from uh mohanath from canada he asked in a world more and more individualist how can you integrate the individual objectives of young talent into the collective culture of the team and the club a problem we we experience also more individualistic also about the mobiles and a lot of different reasons but that's one of them uh, just have this conversation and then once again don't say this is the knowledge you have to work more for the collective no work motivation based guys what are the best teams you see playing football uh, yeah that's uh, italy with the uh, uh, european cup that's uh, real madrid uh, with ancelotti or real madrid uh, with another and then have the conversation why are they a good team probably because they have people like ramos or Maurits who can play football really well they develop individually but they're also understanding that's about the team and then have the discussion not it's about or the team or the individual but what can you do as an individual to help the team so the team can help you as an individual and just have an honest uh, talk with the players with the team I used uh, last training camp, I used the All Blacks. They're not even a football team, but they're really helping each other and by becoming having a better culture in which the All Blacks they keep on performing. That's definitely a high performance uh, 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 team. Um, and then you see that a lot of players also understand that, okay, being too individualistic is not that well. You should try to combine both. Uh, and so, so the most simple answer is use examples. Yeah. Good response, Mark, and I totally agree with, with that. The examples sometimes are a good way to, to co communicate. Yeah, a good way to communicate. And also, then you leave it up to them to tell about their examples, so you invite them to join. If I say, you're too individualistic, you should be a team player. That sounds really okay, Bart knows what to do, but if, here's, if, if there's no empowerment, if there's no engagement, yeah, it will go one ear in and the other ear out. Yeah. Uh, well, we have a lot of questions. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we have one question from uh, Jaime Segura. Uh, from your experience, what was the biggest challenge when implementing your culture and how did you overcome with it? 
Whew, but good question. Yeah, what was the big? I don't. I I don't like the. Uh, sorry, <laughs> these questions. But I, you don't implement the culture. There is an identity. There is a culture, and you try to add to the legacy. You try to improve it, and and with the improvement, I think one of the most difficult things was going away from fixing problems to prevention because a lot of trainers or parents mm -hmm. were used. Yeah, but my kid has a sleeping problem. My kid has a fear of failure. You need to help him, but it will take you a lot of time because it's one on one. So the challenge to, to, to put less time in that and more on the preventive side with the whole team so you can give them more knowledge, more experience. That was a, a big challenge for me. But uh, yeah, at the end, it, it, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like I implement it. It's just, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you, you add to it. Otherwise, it sounds like I've implemented the culture and, and, and you never do that. You always work with what's there and you try to improve it. Yeah. And for both of you, also Maria and Bart, also Maria can go first. Uh, we have one question uh, that talks about motivation. So what would you say is the key to keep any type of team motivated and willing to do their best? How do you implement it, Bart? For example, yeah. it's not the same to motivate a team in Spain than in the Netherlands or, for example, here in Mexico, Argentina. So yeah. the culture is very different and to the way you speak to a team yeah. is a way different, yeah. different. Yeah, good question. And once again, yeah, I'm, I'm really strict with words, but I, I always say I don't motivate players. I inspire them. I say, let's, for example, I ask you, what's your dream? I want to reach Real Madrid, the first team. Okay, that's your dream. And then I, I will add, you're probably inspired by it, you're remembered by it, but... Yeah, so I can, I can go and with, with that question, because, yeah, as... For, was, yeah. No, <laughs> no so, so, so for me, it's like inspire them with their own dreams. But sometimes a player, especially when he has a contract, he can forget his own dream. Because then you get a contract, you get money, he's not getting everything out of himself. Just have the honest talk with them. Okay, and so I help them inspire. I don't motivate, I don't push them, you need to develop. I remind them of their own dream. When they don't have a dream, then you maybe you should motivate, of course. But then you can ask the question, if I should motivate somebody, yeah, is that yeah, how you're going to do that? Yeah, maybe with punishment or with rewards. And yeah, that's that's way more difficult. Um, on the other hand, uh, or sorry, another another answer at what was in my head was about the growth mindset. You should always stimulate the growth mindset that the player believes that he can develop. If a player believes I'm the best or a player believes I'm the worst, that's a fixed mindset, the closed hands, I try to to promote the growth mindset. I always use the open end. What are you going to do to development? What do you want to develop? Yeah. And also we have a question uh, from Luis Restrepo from Costa Rica. Say thank you very much for, for the debate. Thank you. And he uh, asked about um, what can you say or what's your tip uh, when you want to create your own uh, performance culture or your own uh, development culture? So he's uh, responsible of methodology. So if you can advise him or... Well, and then the advice is what you can do to yeah. implement it. Um, I think always it always starts with vision because you saw the video, but the video I, I showed in the beginning, or sorry, you showed, that's our vision. That's what we believe in. That's it's only about, it's about physical training. It's about being uh, creative on the pitch, but focusing also on lifestyle, the person behind the player. But that's our vision in words. So by starting by high performance culture or implement it, start uh, starting um, with what's your vision as a club, put it on paper, make a video of it, because only then you know in which direction you want to go. The, the, the philosophy, the high performance of Liverpool is totally different than that of Chelsea. But they have both have a vision. 
and maybe you like one more than the other, eh? but but both have, have, have their own high performance culture. So start with vision so you can help, uh, you can help and, and also not only help, but also correct each other with, is this still what we want? Yeah, I totally agree, but, and um, well, we see that uh, we have some connection problems with Maria, but we can uh, finalize with you, Bart. Yeah. And I want to ask you to keep in mind for all of you guys uh, at home, uh, what do you think that are the three most important facts or values in creating uh, the right culture? Yeah. And I already got the question from you up front, so I, I will, I'm reading a little bit. No, of course. Um, three things. I really believe in long-term focus. Your vision should be, I believe, in long-term focus. If you only want to win the next game, yeah, what's the long-term focus? I've seen too many youth academies. If you only want the next game, the bigger players are playing, but maybe the smaller guy, in the long term, he can reach the first team. So long-term focus, really important. Second, give the responsibility to the players. Getting the most out of themselves was in our video. Not, I want the most out of you, then I need to motivate. No, the players need to get the most out of themselves. Really, really important. The, the sweat has to be on the right back. A lot of clubs I'm visiting, the trainers, the physical trainers, the physical therapists, the coaches are working really hard and the players are more like relaxing. So responsibility at the players, really important. And the last one, the growth mindset. We believe in growth and development was in the video. We know from science, but now also from practice, that it's really important to handle feedback, to handle setbacks that you believe that you can develop. Let's say you don't believe you can develop, you're just a talent, then maybe a setback says something about your identity. You are a loser, which causes stress, maybe injuries. Now you have a setback, but you have the growth mindset. You believe that you can develop. Then it's not like I am a failure. No, I made a mistake. What do I go to learn? And what do you, I'm going to show perseverance to, 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 to educate myself to become better? So you create hope for yourself. So the three things I believe are really important. Long-term focus, responsibility with the players. Of course, I also got my responsibility, but don't take the responsibility off the players. And three, stimulate the growth mindset. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bart. Well, Maria cannot do it right now because of the internet connection. But I really uh, appreciate your time and not a problem. You have a show us to today because it's amazing. And also, as you said during this discussion and this at uh, that hour, uh, creating. Uh, it's okay, Maria. No, I am here. <laughs> bye bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, say thank you to Bar because the work that you and Maria did in the football industry is amazing, and also a lot of our students have, that have been in the master during the past years uh, have learned a lot of of you because this is a complicated way. Uh, I can say, and we need to make question every every day, like in every moment of the day, because making question make us uh, learn better and to understand uh, or or identity or surrender is better, and to also to understand more our teammates. Yep. And I hope you to enjoy the this discussion and you guys at home also you can take uh, almost at least and to put into your your football careers and uh, i wanna thank you again maria bart for, for your time and yep. to to see you again in other discussion another master class because it was such a such as as honor and but if you have any uh, social media where students can interact with you yeah. or uh, also I want to say that you have a book yeah. that is translated into English so maybe yeah. it's soon uh, it's called tomorrow's talent and it's about the the, the the importance of growth mindset for your uh, for your development 
it's not uh, already published in English, but it's, it's almost there. Then I will send it, of course, to you, my friends at the Real Madrid University. And uh, also great news, he never played at Real Madrid, but I know uh, definitely they have been interested. There are former uh, uh, Dutch professional football player, Robin van Persie, uh, wrote the foreword because he also believes that the growth mindset can help a lot. As social media, that's Bart Heuving um, on Twitter, on Instagram. So if people have more questions in the private chat, I was seeing some, some questions then, and it's not answered or they got anything more, just go by social media, ask it to me, and I will, uh, I will definitely on, answer the, the questions. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, also, you have published two couple of books. Uh, so if you wanna, to say something to the, to the audience to say goodbye, you're welcome. Yes, uh, for me, the, the, the main reflection that I take from this reflection that we did, uh, that uh, yes, we want to develop others, we want to develop identity, and well, Well, I think we, we lost Maria again, but <laughs> during these years, I I, I can try to to think like like Maria. So he will try to say that he need to keep working like in every day and understand the, the individual and the person more. And yeah, also you have Maria in social media, like Maria Ruiz de Oña has her own web page, and you can make questions and but again thank you very much and hope to see you soon yeah not a problem and really nice to do and hopefully uh, you but also of course the audience had a lot of uh, uh, yeah learned something from it and of course uh, it's only one it's only one hour so it's difficult to explain uh, everything you do but i think if you have love for development and love for the game if you combine the two then uh, uh, at the end of the day you will influence hopefully a lot of people but especially the people around you so keep doing uh, the great jobs you're doing and i always like when you're back at az with the students uh, and then uh, and then we have a talk because the cross-cultural learning that's also one point for the eager to learn you can learn a lot uh, from each other yeah totally agree one, one hour is very short but in that in yeah. an hour with that discussion you can make a lot of questions uh, and yeah, yeah and a way of thinking so hopefully it's helpful yes. that. yeah so but thank you very much and see you yeah. soon yeah we thank keep you have a nice evening bye-bye